What up? So today I'm gonna show you how to make this rattan weave little thing. And then I use the same techniques to make this wooden picture overlay. So cool, 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 cool. So first off, a huge thank you to Drew Scott. This video wouldn't have been happening if it weren't for him and his channel, Lone Fox. If you guys aren't following it, you definitely should go follow it. He does a bunch of home decor stuff and everything he does turns out so professional and expensive looking. And yet, like his uh, tutorials are pretty simple, but like in depth and easy to follow so you can come out with the same outcome. Love it. He's great. He's awesome. He actually shouted me out in one of his videos. Also, Schmaz. And I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce his Don't worry. No one knows how to say my username. It's whatever. We're cool. And so I DM him, got to him, like, hey, we need a collab on something. This is awesome. We can make something cool. So we FaceTime, and he basically came up with this whole idea where I would make this woven rattan weave, and then I'd send those to him where he would make something super rad with it, which he did, of course. And voila, this, uh, this video is uh, here. So let's uh, get going. So first, take an old picture frame of yours, take everything out, then put little marks that are inch apart. These are gonna be your holes that the reeds go through. And you want those in the middle, so I also marked the middle of the frame. And that's where the holes are gonna be. So start drilling them out. And I'm using a drill bit that's like, whoops, a little bit bigger than 3 4 inch. And you're gonna make sure you can drill all the way through, make little holes. Because you're gonna use these dowels to hold the reeds in place. This will make a little more sense later. But my dowels were too big, so I decided to make the holes a little bit bigger. And I broke it. So I had to try it again. I'm gonna show you a little later how to do it without even making holes. But for now, instead of making the holes bigger, I just got a smaller dowel. And then I cut those up in like one and a half inch pieces. And how I did that, because I'm lazy, I just used a drill on the saw. So cool. So like I said, that's gonna hold your reed in place. And you want it kind of snug, so the reed's not just falling out. To help it go in easier, I just tapered one edge. And again, I'm lazy, so I just used a pencil sharpener. That seemed to work. So next, you're gonna have some water, and you're gonna put your reeds in there and let them sit for like five to 10 minutes. That will help strengthen the reed. Drip, drip. Now there's like a flat, kind of rough side, and then a round, smooth side. You want round, smooth side up. So place in that first hole, put your peg in there, and pull it across horizontally. Make sure it's pretty tight, but not so tight that it'll break. Then come up from the hole below that and go horizontally until you're all the way down. Next, you're gonna make a vertical line that goes over the horizontal ones. I ran out of reed, so I just plugged a little peg in there and started again. And you're gonna make all these vertical lines. Next, Oops. you're gonna make another horizontal one that's on top of all of those other ones. And make sure it's not right on top of that first horizontal one. Like mine are all kinda on the side that's towards me. So now for the actual weaving part, you're gonna make another vertical one on the left side and do the opposite of what that first vertical one is. So where it's under and over, now you're gonna do over and under. And just repeat that all the way up. And when you come down, you can do the exact same thing and make sure it matches that first one you did. So it's under, over, and on the left side. Oh, also I have a little spray bottle and I'll like spray the, the weave every once in a while. To make sure it's nice and strong. So now for the diagonal lines. You're gonna do an over, under, over, under weave in like a zigzag line. So over the two horizontal lines and under the two vertical lines, then over, under, over, under, over, under. Take you all the way done. Then repeat that on each little corner of the weave. These are what make the little like circle pattern. Once you're done with those, do little jazz hands, I guess. And then we're gonna do the other diagonal one. And we'll be doing the exact opposite, where it's over and under there, we're going to now do under and over. So 
under the two horizontal ones and over the two vertical ones. And see how it's hitting the top left and bottom right of all those corners, making the little circle thing. Make some adjustments with my fingers, flip it over, and I have these little peg things on the back side. You don't need that just to help me film. What you do need is some super glue, and you're just gonna touch on the outside of everything, and that's gonna help hold it together for when you flip it back around and cut it out. So there you go. You have a little rattan sheet. For those of you who are thinking, um, what do you use that for? Don't worry, we'll get to that. But for now, I wanna make a bigger one. So I'm using this frame with this rad picture that I'm gonna take out and probably save for a later project. So for the first one, the holes in the frame were one inch apart. The reed's a quarter inch wide. That made the holes in the weave three quarters of an inch. So if I make the holes in the frame three quarters of an inch apart, that should make the holes in the weave one half inch. So I marked those lines out and drilled the holes and started at it. I got this reed off of Amazon and it came in like a roll of a thousand feet. And I ended up making like three of these big ones and three of the small ones. And I still had a little bit left over. So it went a long way. This wasn't like a super hard project, but it was pretty time consuming. I think this one took me like eight hours or so to make. But I got quicker the more I made. So got that done, flip it over, add some glue on the edges to help it stay in place when you cut it out. And I just use scissors and done. So if you don't want to buy the reed, you could probably just go find some. That's what I did. And I just cut it in half and uh hello don't toast don't don't rub your face on a razor blade hey you you, nah, you big dummy so you cut that in half and wait for your cat to leave the shop and check the size i wanted it a little bit smaller so i cut that again in half so now we have a little force and began to weave so i just use little strands that are size of like the width and the height that seemed to make things a little bit quicker. And then when weaving it, I didn't even put them in the pegs because the weave like held it together and we'll be cutting it out anyways. That also helped the process speed up. And I'm curious to see how this one dries out if it will dry like yellow. I'll probably show that on the next video. But anyways, so cut that out. Cut that out. Hey, cut that out. <laughs> Dumb. And there you go a uh, rattan weave you made from scratch and yeah like i said i just found these i was driving looking for some and i found them on the side of the road they have like the big bushy tops and i found one that was like smooth all the way down so i snagged a couple and i also thought it'd be cool to do like a weave out of wood aspen trees are probably my favorite tree mostly because the bark's cool and because i've had one outside the house that i grew up in you can carve your name in them and they like trust up i think that said brian at one point I also had a cabin that was surrounded by them. My great grandpa and like five of his buds gathered up a hundred bucks in 1932 and bought a hundred year lease from the government. It was just like a small humble one with like a kitchen, a little bedroom, an outhouse and a spring that we dug ourselves. We had like a hundred year lease so we should have been able to keep it till 2032. But like five years ago, the government said, psych, you have a year to tear it down. So Aspen's kind of have like a sentimental value to me. So. I climbed my parents' tree, cut off some branches, and then just like shaved off a little piece. Took a ruler, tried to make the edges nice and straight, and cut out a strip that was about a quarter of an inch wide. And then cut out a bunch of them. And then I kept them in water to help try to keep them like not as frail and fragile. Oh, and also this is the way you can do it if you don't wanna cut holes and do pegs. I just used like scotch tape to hold them in place. And I did that because they were so frail and started weaving them and they were just breaking. So I kept trying again. And eventually I was just like, nah, we're gonna start over. And I took each one of them and I put glue on the backside. It was this like rubbery glue, hoping that would help. So I put that on every single one of them. 
and let them dry. And we're gonna start a uh, start again. So weaving them through, it, they were still breaking and whatnot, but I was determined to make it work. So I got them through, added super glue, and I thought it looked pretty good. The aspens have like this like white chalky stuff on them. So to mimic it, I just got some matte spray paint. I kind of wish I would have actually used chalk, but the, the spray paint looked pretty good. So now to pick the frame. I have this black one and then the white one. That's like the exact same one I used to do the weavings. I don't know which one looks better. So I just cut it to size, shoved it in there, and it looked pretty, pretty cool. And I thought it'd be cool if I like added a photo of me or me and my sister from the cabin and then give this to my mom for her birthday. I think she would like that. But because she's like my biggest fan, she's definitely already seen this video. So sorry, mom, no surprises. And like I said, I made three of these big ones and then three of the small ones. And we're just going to package these up and send them over to Drew Scott at Lone Fox. And he's going to show us what you can make with them. I'll put a link up here in the corner for you guys to go check out his video and see all the cool stuff you can make with these rattan sheets. Right. Let's so, go open cool. this package and see what is inside. I'm honestly so excited to see his video. I haven't seen it yet. He sent me like clips and some pictures of the final products. I love the light thing he did. And and honestly, I loved working with Drew. So I'd love to do more collabs with him. I wanna know what you guys think. I wanna know what you guys think of like this format where I make something and then he makes something out of it. Let me know in the comments what you guys want us to do. And yeah. I also tried to like form one over a skull and it didn't work. So I have one extra one and I'm going to give that away to you guys. And I can either give away like one big one to you guys or like nine small ones. So just uh, let me know in the comments what you think I should do. So make sure you're signed up on my site, www.shmoon.com for the giveaways. If you've done that before in a past giveaway, you don't have to do it again. And yeah, if you guys are new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. Hit the notification bell if you haven't. Um, next video, I will be figuring out how to weave on the skull. I'll show you in the next video how that little green fresh one turned out. Oh, and also I have a Kickstarter coming soon with that colorful leather. So stay tuned for that. A lot of, a lot of exciting stuff coming. So cool.